Hi guys, my name is Tom and I'm the tech chap and this is the new iPhone 6S. Or is it? The 6 and the 6S do of course look almost identical, except for being a little bit heavier and a tad thicker. The design is almost exactly the same. It has put on a few grams to accommodate the 3D touch technology in the display. A difference you do notice if you hold the 6 and the 6S together. It is still a beautiful device though. It sits comfortably in your hand thanks to the rounded corners and smooth aluminium body, which actually is stronger than the iPhone 6. The aluminium has been strengthened so you don't have to worry about your uh, phone bending in your pocket. Not that you really ever had to worry about that in the first place, it was always a bit uh, of a rare thing to happen in some extreme cases. But it's not just the body that's become more durable, the glass has also been strengthened. Uh, I know many of you will have had uh, scratches and uh, shattered displays on your iPhone in the past, so hopefully that is a thing of the past and uh, we'll see as I use this over the next few months whether that is true and the glass is more resistant. So the new 6S features the same beautiful 4.7 inch display with the same 1334 by 750 resolution as the iPhone 6. Apple's displays are factory calibrated and widely considered by many to be the benchmark for color accuracy but it's just above basic HD resolution, does feel a bit outdated, a bit 2013 maybe. Admittedly at 4.7 inches it doesn't really need a silly quad HD or 4K resolution, that'd be just too sharp, you wouldn't see it. And Sony's new Z5 Compact has stuck with a similar 720p res, but I think it would be nice to see a 1080p full HD resolution on the iPhone 7, is something I'd quite like to see. It feels a little bit outdated, their current retina display. But it's not all about resolutions, pixel densities and screen to body ratios. Apple have added a new colour option. A genuinely really nice looking rose gold finish is added to space grey, silver and gold colour options. As well as colour you have to choose what storage size you want. The 6S is available in three models, the 16, 64 and 128GB models with around 11 gigs actually usable on the base model. More than ever I highly recommend you bite the bullet and opt for the slightly more expensive 64 gigabyte model. Not only are new apps generally getting larger in size as they make use of the more advanced hardware in the actual devices, but thanks to the new live photos feature and the support for 4K video recording, you're going to use up that space quicker than ever. So rather than rationing your storage and worrying about whether you'll have room for the latest iOS software updates in the future, I would highly recommend uh, you do go for at least the 64 gig one. I know it's more expensive, but I think you'll kick yourself if you don't. Inside we have a new A9 processor alongside two gigabytes of RAM, a first for an iPhone, which makes this significantly more powerful. And it is reflected in the benchmarks, but not quite so much in real world tests. So where can we see the better performance? The most obvious example is boot times, which compared to the iPhone 6 are significantly faster. As well as that, the already impressive Touch ID has seen a bump in performance too. Compared to the iPhone 6, the new 6S is significantly faster to register your finger and unlock the phone. And from my tests, it also seems ever so slightly more reliable as well. But generally, the performance on the 6S isn't a particularly big step up over the iPhone 6. It is definitely the fastest iPhone you can buy and does offer some noticeable speed improvements uh, when it comes to load times of intensive apps, boot times and uh, general sort of just uh, in use with intensive games uh, and applications. But if you're opening things like messages, music, social media, just browsing the home screens, perhaps flicking between tabs and apps, you don't really see an improvement because, well, the iPhone 6 was already so fast. This is of course largely down to the incredibly well optimized iOS software. If it's running the latest iOS 9.1, any iPhone that can take it from the last couple of years is nearly as fast and smooth as each other. There are of course small evolutionary improvements, but the core iOS experience doesn't really require you to always need the latest iPhone, which is good for consumers because it means the phone that you have can last a little bit longer, you can still enjoy using it even if other phones come out. But it also means if you're someone who likes to be on the cutting edge of technology and always have the fastest and greatest uh, hardware, you won't always see a huge performance benefit getting the latest phone and that's what we're seeing here. It is faster, it is better, but it is an evolutionary upgrade. If I asked you what you wanted in the next iPhone, I doubt the idea of a deep press offering a sort of middle mouse button feature called 3D Touch would have been at the top of your list. To be fair though, as Steve Jobs did once say, sometimes people don't know what they want until you show it to them. And I think that's fair enough and actually is the case here. So what is it and how does 3D Touch work? Currently smartphones recognize two types of finger input, a press and a long press. Now Apple have introduced a deep press, or what they are calling 3D Touch, 
which is a technology they first introduced on the new 2015 Mac. Where apps have been optimized to recognize a 3D touch, it does offer a genuinely quicker way of accessing certain key features. For example, if you do a 3D touch deep press on the messages or the mail app, you can quickly create a new message, which does, I think, actually save some time. You can also get directions um, home from the Apple Maps or even set a new reminder. Some apps, though, don't actually offer any 3D touch features. Uh, so if you press it on settings or stocks or Apple Store, for example, uh, nothing will happen. So it's a bit of a trial and error finding out which works with the 3D touch technology. Using it within the photo app gives you photo previews, while using it in Safari can give you website previews. Most importantly, 3D Touch is also used to play live photos, the new feature exclusive to the iPhone 6S. Live photos capture three seconds of video either side of a photo. So when you 3D Touch a photo, it'll play it. And uh, although some say it's a little bit gimmicky, the live photo feature, and it does increase file sizes a bit, although you can turn it off. Personally, I really like it. You're still taking a full 12 megapixel photo, but it adds uh, a little another dimension, perhaps some context to your photos. It's nice to see sort of stuff you may have missed just before and just after taking the photo. So um, arguably it's a bit of a gimmick, but I think it's pretty cool. It looks nice. So while 3D touch and live photos do take a little while to get used to, in fact, even remembering to use them in the first place is something uh, I had to keep reminding myself to. But when you do, 3D touch can save time by accessing key features more quickly and live photos I think do look pretty cool. Now the 6S boasts a new 12 megapixel rear camera which is up from 8 on its predecessor along with a new 5 megapixel front eyesight camera again up from 1.2 on the iPhone 6. So as well as taking higher resolution sharper photos it can also record up to 4k resolution at 30 frames per second. 4k files are nearly double the size of a standard full HD 1080p video. So if you're planning on buying the base 16 gigabyte model, which again I do advise you to avoid, do bear in mind that 4K will fill it up very quickly. At a certain point though, megapixels don't make much of a difference to image quality, although it does allow you to zoom in or crop photos and retain more detail. The 6S though produces fantastic photos that are both colorful and sharp. It's one of the best cameras you can buy on a smartphone. Video quality though is markedly better than the iPhone 6. It appears sharper and much more colorful, even at the same resolution. The 4K option though puts the 6S in another league. It future-proofs the phone to an extent and produces some wonderfully crisp video. If you want to find out more about 4K videos from the iPhone 6S, you can check out my 6S versus Galaxy S6 4K video shootout on my channel right now. Finally on cameras, the front eyesight has had a bump in spec from 1.2 to 5 megapixels and it makes selfies and FaceTime video calls much higher quality. While most of us had our fingers crossed that Apple would address the distinctly average battery life of iPhones, uh, although the 6 Plus actually is pretty good overall, unfortunately there still hasn't been any improvement in battery life on the 6S. In fact, battery capacity has been slightly reduced to about 1715 milliamp hours. Apple claimed the 6S matches the battery life of its predecessor despite the smaller capacity, so no less but no more. While iOS 9 is supposed to add an extra hour of battery life and does include a useful power saving mode, uh, the 6S will only last you about a full day. Basically, if you've got a 6, uh, it's about the same. So you will be rationing the battery by the evening. And it is disappointing that Apple seemed to be willing to make the iPhone a bit hairier and a bit thicker to accommodate the new 3D touch technology for the display, but we're still not seeing um, the same thing for battery capacity. I think not, most of us wouldn't mind a slightly thicker phone if it meant we could have a longer, better battery. And also considering the Android competition, there's still a curious lack of any wireless, or actually more importantly, fast charging features as well, with the 6S taking roughly two and a quarter hours to fully charge. Sound and cool quality are just above average, I'd say, offering reasonably rich and loud sounds from the main uh, and cool speakers. But it does a good job of making apps, games, and music sound pretty nice. Although, of course, headphones are always recommended. Of course, it doesn't compete with the stereo speakers on Sony or HTC phones, for example, but it's still pretty good. Uh, cool quality is also similarly impressive in Cools. Now the person had any problem hearing the other one. And uh, I think unlike some phones that make you sound a bit robotic, the iPhone pleasantly made you sound quite natural. Um, so it was quite nice to use as a phone, which uh, is surprisingly a rare thing to say for phones these days. Without question, the iPhone 6S is the best iPhone you can buy. Of course it is. Why would they release one that isn't uh, the best one? But the question is, should you buy one? Uh, is it worth it, worthy of an upgrade? 
and uh, do the improvements make it something that you should be really going out to buy right now or perhaps you can wait for the iPhone 7 in a year's time? Well, I'd say if you're an iPhone 6 user, it's definitely not worth the upgrade. Live photos are kind of cool, a little bit gimmicky perhaps. Uh, 4K video is nice and the uh, upgraded camera is obviously one of the most important features as well as the performance which is uh, most noticeable in intensive games but generally you're not really going to see it. Side by side you'll notice the differences if you're comparing video quality, if you're comparing app load times but I would, I'd wager day to day you wouldn't really know the difference. I had to keep reminding myself to use a 3D touch and the live photos because I kept forgetting that they existed, they, didn't, they weren't really things that I felt I needed, needed to use every day. To be fair, the 3D Touch, I think, do does save some time. It makes uh, opening new messages a little bit quicker, for example, but it's something that you don't really need. If you own an iPhone 5S or earlier, I would definitely say it is worth upgrading to, though. Uh, and I would also say it's worth upgrading to the 6S as opposed to, say, the slightly cheaper now iPhone 6, because although I'd say it's not worth going from the 6 to the 6S, I would still opt for this one. Um, because it does have that 4K recording capability and the 3D Touch, which makes it perhaps a little bit more future-proof as a phone. So I wouldn't skimp on getting the iPhone 6 if you're upgrading from an earlier um, iPhone or an Android phone. Uh, in terms of what storage option, I'm not going to go on, again, on, a, on about it much more, but I would really highly recommend the 64 gig one. As I say, this is actually the 16, and I only have about 12 usable. And uh, after doing, just filming for about 15 minutes on 4K, uh, it was full and I had to uh, delete some apps. So it really is not worth uh, having to ration your storage the entire time you have your iPhone. Reports have said that people are, who buy the 16 gig will then buy the bigger model the next year. So um, just save yourself and get it this time and you'll enjoy your phone more. So overall, definitely the best iPhone phone you can buy. The uh, 4K and video and camera performance is still exceptional, class leading, and the performance is really, really quick. I was really impressed as well just how much of an improvement Touch ID was. It's not something you really think about a lot, but if you're doing it every day, in fact, you're doing it dozens of times a day, unlocking your phone with your finger, then you are saving a few seconds every single time, which is nice. So absolutely, I'd recommend this phone if you're an iPhone lover, or even if you're an Android lover, it's definitely worth considering. I'm, uh, I tend to use a Galaxy S6 day to day, and I'm sort of, on the offense of whether I might uh, swap to this, so we'll see about that. So thank you very much for watching this full review of the iPhone 6S. You can, on my channel, you can find a 4K comparison uh, versus the Galaxy S6. You can also find a iPhone 6 versus 6S 1080p comparison, as well as a Touch ID speed test and a general speed test. And there'll be loads more iPhone 6S goodness to come. So it's definitely worth subscribing. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and please do like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you again on the Tech Chat.